This entry that follows 009, I will present the evidence that shows that Bell's inequalities have no consequences for understanding quantum versus classical correlations. Hans Gerd has published a paper which shows usual classical probabilities lead to violation of Bell's inequalities. I will say it again, classical probabilities, not quantum, violate Bell's inequalities. This is a change. Hahn has found that classical probabilities are not restricted to classical physics. They work for quantum mechanics too. If it is all classical, where are the quantum correlations, Bell's inequalities, are supposed to quantify? There are none. Here is the abstract. Mathematics, equivalent to Bell's derivation of the inequalities, also allows a local hidden variable explanation for the correlation between distant measurements. That could not be clearer. He has proved non-local correlations are not needed. He is talking about local hidden variables, not non-local ones. Let us have a look at the first paragraph. To many, the experimental verification of the violation of inequalities is sufficient evidence for completeness of quantum theory. Here it will be demonstrated that Bell's form of local hidden correlation can be transformed to violate Bell's inequalities. Hahn's results are totally against what Bell obtained. We can conclude from Gerd's paper that Bell's inequalities do not differentiate between local realism and quantum mechanics. Hence, the experiments of Aspect, Vives, and others do not differentiate either. That is, Bell's theorem is wrong. It is a major result. Bell is supposed to have shown that the correlation between classical events cannot exceed two, but quantum mechanics violates them. Why? Because Bell made an error, and I will discuss that error in due course. In the end, it is shown that quantum spin satisfies the corrected version of Bell's inequalities. In fact, the correct form of Bell's inequalities has the limit of 2 root 2 for spin, not 2. Even this is only a special case, and Bell's inequalities might take some entirely different value because it fundamentally depends upon the geometry of the data. I will be clearer on this point later in this blog, 009b and 009c. But 2 root 2 is correct for spin 1 half, not 2. However, when things are simpler than the spin data, the version of Bell's inequalities with the limit of 2 does work. For example, correlation between different sets of probabilities based upon frequency of events, like rolling dice, do satisfy Bell's inequalities. They do work for our macroscopic classical world. They have been tested many times. For example, think of a set of classically correlated properties. A population of people have lots of correlation. Let's say the color of skin, the color of eyes, and the color of hair. If there are correlations between these properties, then they will satisfy Bell's inequalities. No classical correlations, according to Bell, can exceed the value of 2. But it is well known that if the filters are set as shown here in EPR coincidence experiments, then these quantum results violate Bell's inequalities. No one has ever been able to explain that quantum correlation of 0.0828 except to surmise it is due to entanglement, the mysterious holism in which the state of one quantum object is tied to the state of a second separate object. Well, no, entanglement is not the key to the trick. Han Gerz has shown that classical probabilities do the trick. Quantum mechanics for spin one half then satisfies the modified Bell's inequalities so that Bell's theorem is toast. Local hidden variables can exist and can complete quantum mechanics, so a subquantum theory can exist. And Einstein was right. He does not play dice. Hence you can be sure that Hans Gerd's paper will be scrutinized because there are lots of people out there who will not like this result. Unfortunately, like and dislike are subjective comments and of little consequence. People will have to show there are objective errors. But where did Bell go wrong? The results of GERDs are consistent with those of Joy Christian at Oxford 
and my local hidden variable model. So we turn to that work now. In my next entry of 009B, we will find the reason for Bell's error and Christian's elegant way to correctly account for the elements of physical reality that Bell missed.